Uh, this will be a tutorial on JavaScript and what I'd like to do with this is I'd like to have you follow the um, tutorial on the MDN site to make the breakout game and then what I'd like to do in the next video or follow-up videos is um, review the game and talk about the code that's there and explain how it works and talk about how we can improve it and then also kind of update the code to modern and professional level JavaScript standards, right? So that way, you know, you can see what the basic code is and then see how people are developing today and the tools that they're using and, um, you know, how to write better quality code, okay? Um, so that said, let's get started with the tutorial. I'm going to use uh, Visual Studio Code as my code editor, and I have a folder here where I've, I've completed the game. And so what I'll do is I'll drag the folder on top of Visual Studio Code and it'll open it up as a project here. And um, we can take a quick look at the game. The game looks like this, right? And you can hit the ball with the paddle and take out the bricks, you know, and it keeps track of your lives and your score, right? So that's the game, right? Um, and what I'd like to have you do is make the game for yourself. Okay, so here's the, the tutorial, 2D breakout game using pure JavaScript, so we're not going to use any libraries, just straight up JavaScript, right? The, um, the tutorial has these 10 tutorial steps, and on each step, I'll go to the first one now, they give you some code samples and some background information about the code, and at the bottom of the page, it gives you the completed code. So if you're working up here and you run into an error or something goes wrong, you can always compare your code to what is at the bottom of the page. Okay? So that way you can find any mistakes or you can compare what you've written to what they, they have, right? Okay? So let's, uh, let's take a look. I'm going to go to this first page here. And um, actually, let me start over again. I'm going to delete all of my code here. And then um, I'm going to make a brand new file. They're going to suggest that we make this new file called index.html, right? And the code should look like this. So I'll, I'll copy this. I'll make a new file. I'll save it as index.html and paste it there, OK? And in the next step, they're going to want us to add some JavaScript to the page, and they're going to suggest putting it in the script tag. And that's fine, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, like, why don't we move this into its own file, and then it'll be easier for us to manage, right? We won't have to mix our JavaScript in with this HTML. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll modify the script tag here. And what I want to do is add the source attribute inside the script tag and then I'll make a new file called main.js and what we're going to do is we're going to link this main.js to the script source here so I'll type in main.js right and now what we'll do is we'll just put all of our JavaScript in main.js and that'll be kind of nicer it won't be cluttered with any of that other HTML stuff so let's copy these two lines here. And these two lines get a reference to the canvas. So there's a canvas element in, in the HTML file right here with an ID name of my canvas. And when we look at main.js, you can see we've done document.getElementById my canvas. So this gets a reference to that element. So this kind of ties us to this element here. Okay. Um, the canvas is, is an area on the screen that acts as like an image, but you can draw into that image. You can draw with pixels using the canvas methods, okay? Um, the reason this is good is for games, um, it's very performant. So it, it's like very quick for the computer to calculate like where pixels are drawn on the screen. So if you need fast performance or you're doing like complicated graphic stuff, Canvas is a good choice, right? Since we're making a game, you know, Canvas is kind of good for us, right? Um, so anyway, so we've got that. Now let's draw something. So I'm going to copy the code here and paste it. 
and this block of code draws a rectangle on the screen. So the second line up here gets a, a reference to the canvas context. The canvas context is the, the, like, it's like a robot that draws stuff on the canvas. So you call all the drawing methods on the context. So you get a reference to the context, and then from there, all of the drawing operations happen by calling methods or, or properties on the, um, or setting properties on the context. Okay? So then that's what's happening here. Let's, uh, oops, let's uh, save that. And then we'll refresh our, our page here, and you can see it draws a red, a red square, right? So what did we do? We talked to the context, and we said, begin a new path. Okay, so that actually doesn't do anything. It doesn't, well, it doesn't draw anything. Okay, so nothing happened here, except we told the context that we're starting a new drawing. So now it's prepared to make something new. Okay, then what we did is we created a rectangle. So we said, hey, we're beginning to draw a drawing. Why don't you draw a rectangle now? Okay, and the numbers here determine where the rectangle sits on the screen and how big it is. So the first number is the X position and it's where the left edge is. Okay, the second number is where the top edge is. So the first number says we're 20 pixels from the left. The second number says we're 40 pixels down from the top. And then the last two numbers are the width and the height. So we said our, our rectangle should be 50 wide by 50 tall. If I wanted it to be wider, I could do 80 wide. And then if I refresh here, you can see it's a little wider, okay? So actually setting the rectangle here doesn't actually draw anything. You can see if I, if I comment out the lines below here, nothing gets drawn. So Let's uncomment each one of these. So I'll set the fill style. Now setting the fill style is like, you know, if we take the robot painter as an analogy, this is like telling the robot to put the color red on the brush. So put the, the red paint on the brush, but that still doesn't draw anything, right? So if I save this and I refresh, I don't see anything. This last step right here, fill, says, you know what? I've defined, I've marked out an area on the canvas. I've started a new drawing. I put some color on the brush and I've marked out this area and what I want you to do is fill that area, the area defined by the path, right? Fill it and then, you know, it'll just fill with the color that's on the brush. So now here we've actually drawn something. Now the last line, close path, we don't, doesn't do anything visual that you're going to see, but if we close the path, then we can start a new path, okay? So the paths aren't connected, they're not part of the same path, right? Um, so if we, we always call close path when we want to start a new drawing, okay? Let's move on, right? So the next block of code here draws a circle. So I'm going to borrow this and um, we'll refresh our page here and you can see I've got a circle. Looks like the circle's in the middle of the canvas, right? Let's take a look at the code here, right? So uh, we called begin path to start a new drawing. We're calling the arc method. So arc draws an arc. It's like using a compass. So it may draw part of a circle or a complete circle. It doesn't have to do the whole circle, right? Um, the first two parameters are the center point of the circle. So if you imagine this as drawing with a compass, right? Then this would be where you put the point down, right? And the third number is the radius, right? So the radius is um, like how wide your compass is, right? So, you know, these first two numbers are, are circles right in the middle. And if we remember the, the canvas is two or 480 wide, so 240 would be half of that and it's 320 tall. So 160 would be half of that. So we can see that the center point is in the exact center of the canvas. And then 20 is the radius. So our circle is actually 40 pixels across. So if we want to make the circle larger, we could say, let's make it 50 as the radius and it's bigger. Okay. The next two numbers here are the starting angle and the ending angle. The angle here is calculated in radians. You're probably used to um, degrees, which would be 360 degrees like this, or maybe we could do uh, the degree symbol, right? So 0 to 360. In radians, it would look like this, 0 to 6.28. 
oops, 0.28, right? This 6.28 is really um, two times pi, right? Remember, pi is like 3.14, okay? So if you think about it that way, it kind of makes more sense to me, you know, but really like two pi is the full circle. So anytime we need to get the full circle, we can just ask the computer for the value of pi and then multiply by two, right? Um, if I wanted to do half a circle, I could do one pi, right? You can see now it goes, it starts here, works its way to halfway. And then when we call fill, the computer says, okay, well, I'm gonna close that shape off and then fill the area with the color that's on the brush, okay? Okay, great. So let's, uh, let's move on to this next one here. And uh, this draws another rectangle, but this time it uses the stroke method and stroke style, right? So we can set the fill of an element on the canvas, and we can also stroke that element like this and just draw the outline, okay? And you can do both if you want. So if I, if I did this, if I said ctx.fill, we can see it fills with green because that was the last um, fill style. So when you're working with the canvas, Im imagine this canvas context is like a robot. You know, if we told the robot to put green paint on the brush, then down here, if we tell it to fill something, it uses the green paint for the fill, right? Um, this stroke style right here, um, you can use any kind of color. So you can see any color that would work in CSS would work here. So uh, here we've used a hex color. Here we used a keyword color. Down here we're using an RGBA color. So this is like how much red we want to put into our color. Let's put like a little bit of red. I'll put like 44 red. Um, this The numbers here go in range of 0 to 255. So if you put 255 in, you're getting the maximum of that color. Let's put in 25 green. Right? Actually, it's a little hard to see that fill color Let's or the stroke. Let's get rid of the fill for a moment, right? So there we go, it's kind of more purple, right? Um, the last number is the transparency or the alpha. So if I make it 0.1, it's completely opaque, right? So you can see a little darker there. And if I make it you know, 0.1, it'll be really transparent. It's a lot lighter that time, okay? So anyway, so there's, um, there's Canvas. So your, your goal is to go through the tutorial, complete it, and then in the next video, I'll talk about how we can improve the code in the tutorial and make the game better and make the code, like bring the code up to like modern standards. And we'll learn some new features of JavaScript on the way too, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching and I hope that this is useful for you.